Thanks again for joining us for our, our webinar today about taking your PowerPoint to the next level. Now, just as a note, we're this is not a webinar for people who've never used PowerPoint before. It's sort of looking at how, if you have a basic understanding of PowerPoint, how can you learn about the features to sort of take your presentations in PowerPoint to the next level? Most people, I would say, have worked with PowerPoint, I would say, sometime in their career because it's been around for a very long time. It actually has been around for 30 years. A lot of people don't know it was initially called Presenter, and it was developed actually for Macintosh in 1987. And interesting enough, Microsoft, I think, saw its potential pretty quickly and uh, bought it. It was one of the first sort of big acquisitions of software back in the day. And uh, yeah, and then they converted, changed the name to PowerPoint. and history was made. And so since then, I've been working with it for many, many, many years, I'd say almost 20 years at this point, and I've seen many, many versions of it. I definitely have seen it evolve a lot, especially in the last uh, version, 2016, which is the one that we're going to be going through today, that you'll see that they've added, I think Microsoft is recognized that, you know, people use it for not just big sort of presentations up on a screen, but people do a lot of graphic work, they do graphs, they do tables. So there's a lot of stuff kind of happening. And I've what I have loved is in this last version of PowerPoint that Microsoft definitely has included a lot of features that before I would have had to done sort of in other programs like outside of PowerPoint and brought them in. And I love the fact that now you can do it all within PowerPoint. And they've made stuff a lot easier, I think, for folks that are just getting started out. So let's talk a little bit about master slides and layouts, because this is the sort of back end of PowerPoint. And I've noticed like a lot of people when they're first starting out with PowerPoint, they know that there are these ready-made templates and they know how to use them, but they don't really understand what's happening in the back end. And because of that, they don't understand how they can actually like adjust it or customize it to make it uh, work for their their business or their branding and stuff. So in 2016, now in the new sort of it's called the backstage part of PowerPoint or all Microsoft Office product. Uh, you have an area where if you're going to create a new PowerPoint, we have all these sort of ready-made templates and layouts. And what I do love, and I'll just jump into PowerPoint right now, and I have a little sample going at the same time here. So if I go, what I was mentioning is if I go along here to the top to file, you'll see this is what's considered the backstage part now. And it allows you to do a lot of things like opening and saving. But the big thing is here in the new section, we have all these sort of new templates. What I love about them as well is the fact that you can go in and within them actually sort of customize a little bit of the colors as well. But again, maybe for your particular company, this isn't the right color, the right sort of shade of blue that you need. And there are ways to actually change that. So here's my actual template that I actually did pick from this list here. It was uh, this one here, Circuit. So I picked this circuit one, and when I, if I want to go to the back end and actually change the master slides, what I'm going to do is go along the top ribbon to view, and then I'm going to select the slide master button. That's going to open up the slide master view. So in this view section here, you'll see that this top slide up here is considered the slide master. It will dictate what all what it looks like underneath. So if I took away this background. Uh, and just made it format the background and made it uh, a darker color, it will impact the rest of all the slides underneath it. Now, that's a great feature in the sense that if you are creating a presentation and you make a change either to the look and feel of it, it will change all the rest of your slides. So you don't have to sit there and fiddle uh, with all this sort of look and feel of the slide. What I don't like about this sometimes is the fact that because of this top slide dictating what is underneath, you're sort of committed to the fact that you have to have this image, as, as you see here, on all the slides. So say you wanted a slide that was more like, um, like a divider slide that was just like solid in one color. Now, you could create it here over top. So there's an option here. I could go to insert. Uh, I can go here, oh, sorry, to home. And I'm, I could just put a box basically in front of it. Now, what that's doing is it's a bit of a temporary fix. It's basically hiding the master slide in the background, but it would give me a slide that would be sort of black and would be a sort of subdivider across other through my presentation. Or what I can do as well is I can add another, insert another master slide that's blank. And in with this blank one, I can then go in and make this one format the black the background and make it 
black and I could make this word, these words white so that they could be easily seen. So, so here I can make all these sort of changes. So you'll see by not making the change here on the master slide, I can customize each of these layout slides accordingly. But if I did want, say I wanted the all of my slides uh, as part of this slide master to be black, then I would take this black background and format them all accordingly. Another aspect that, you know, you can work with these master slides, so say, you know, the, you like the coloring of it. I'm going to go back here to slide master. You can fiddle with, you can change the fonts. So say I'm here and right now I, I want to change the fonts to uh, a different combination. So here's some combinations where it has sort of the header as Arial and the sub uh, sort of text slide as Arial as well. And this one has the header is Arial and the text is Calibri. So you could actually, there's a whole bunch of preset ones that you could go in and decide, oh, what I like the look of, or you could actually go in and customize these fonts. So if you have a particular font for your company business, your branding, you could select it from here, as long as it was installed on your computer, you could install it here so that all your going forward when you create new slides, it always has the right font. Another thing as well is you can play around with the colors. So right now there's all these sort of preset colors that you could play with, but same sort of thing. If for example, you had some custom branding colors as part of your company, you could go here in the background and customize everything, what the text looks like, any accent color. So say your company has some particular branding accent colors, you could go in here and actually select the colors or if they're not actually listed here, you can go in and actually type in the RGB and get very specific. Again, this is a little bit more advanced, but if you're dealing with wanting to create a template for your company and you spend a bit of time initially, then going forward, your the look and feel of your presentation will always be consistent, which is great because this is all happening in the back end with the master slides. I'm just going to go back here to our my main little presentation here to make sure that I stay on track. All right. So as I showed you, we were talking about the master slides and the layouts. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens after you've created these slides in the background in the master slide view, how that you actually use them to adjust your presentation. So let me just go back here to my sample, my sample, here we go. And I'm going to just close out of my master view because that's why we've seen these slides here on the left. Okay, so you'll see here now we changed this from the beginning to something black. So I'm just going to put in here a webinar sample so that we know what we're talking about. Great. So I'm going to say, for example, I wanted to change the layout and I had a whole bunch of layout designs in the back end. I could, when I create a new slide, I could go here and create new slide. I can also go here to insert new slide. And when I click new slide, it will give me all the layout slides that I have created in the back end. So if I've gotten more specific, like here we have all these different layouts for text and stuff, or down here with the custom design area, say I went through and I created a bunch of subs, like subtitle slides and graphic slides, I could select them here very easily from the list. So I'm just going to go here to this, just change it to this section, and you'll see that it's, you know, it would select that slide from that layout. Say, for example, with this particular slide that already exists, say I decide, oh, I've already created it, but I, I actually want it to have columns and I have a layout slide that already has columns in it. I can just right click and go to layout. Same sort of idea. I'm going to check, check from the list here all my different layout slides and oh, I have a three picture column one. And so it's setting up here and then all I have to do is spend a little bit of time and copying and pasting the text automatically into there. Now the reason why if you had, uh, the reason why the text didn't automatically go into these particular text boxes, if I had used um, another layout slide that had had other uh, column boxes, potentially PowerPoint could recognize it and move the stuff over at least the, the first two columns. But because my previous design didn't have any columns, PowerPoint didn't know that I really wanted the text to go in here. So that's just a little added step, but again, when you're actually, here's one with images and I'm going to go to the layout slide and I'm going to select here, this one with three pictures. 
and you see that it recognized these two as pictures, but it didn't really recognize this third one. So I'd have to go in and kind of play around with that, but at least it did some of the work for me. So that's another feature that's great about creating these layout slides in advance is that later on, if you do make changes, it's really just a quick click and change with little fine tweaking adjustments, and you can significantly ch change the look of your presentation throughout. All right. Let's go back here to our main presentation. Now, let's talk about improving images. Now, famously say a picture is worth a thousand words. I would challenge that in the sense that if the picture is not great, it is not worth a thousand words. And I have seen this countless times in presentations where people put in, they, they recognize the fact that people like seeing images in their PowerPoint, in, in presentations, but either the photographs are not uh, clear, they're too small, they're too many and they're not clear, uh, they're dark, you can't see what's actually in the image, or what the actual focus of the image is sort of, you know, it's a gigantic image, but what you really want to look at is sort of a really a small part of the image, so it hasn't been cropped. So let's look at some ways that we can actually improve your images throughout your presentation. And there's some great tools, like I said, in PowerPoint 2016 to help you do that. So let's go over here to my little sample and I'm going to undo that madness that I just did here with these pictures. And I'm gonna go up here to my little sample. I'm just gonna move you guys out of the way here. All right, great. All right, make you nice and big. So when I click on an actual image, you've imported an image into a PowerPoint through insert. When you actually select the image with your cursor, a little tab comes up here at the top called picture tools. When I select that, you'll see that the whole ribbon changes here at the top. So I have a whole bunch of options that I can work with. So what I'm going to do now when I look at this image is I find it very dark. So I'm going to go here to corrections. And what you'll see is I have a bunch of options that I can look at. I can improve the light brightening as well as the contrast of the image. So you'll see is I'm going to just, and what's nice is it gives you a preview. So before I make my decision, I can kind of decide, you know, maybe this is too bright and white and shiny, and maybe this one is a little bit too dark. So I can kind of play around and pick the one I want. I can also change the tone a little bit. So say, for example, uh, right now it's a very sort of uh, yellowy color, and I want to sort of make it more subdued. There's some color saturations I can choose. So one is 33 here, a preset. And what it does is it just, you notice, it's just a little bit more subdued. The colors are not so bright. I can also make it grayscale. I find that helpful if you have lots of different images with lots of different color schemes. It can be a little bit aggressive on someone looking at your presentation's eyes. So I find by taking all the images and making them grayscale or making them subdued, it makes them match more and makes them look like they're meant to be together. Here's another image, same sort of thing, very dark, you can't see her face. Another aspect we're gonna talk a little bit is cropping and the fact that you know there's a whole bunch there, you basically see down the hallway and that's not really the important part of the image. The important part of the image is the people. So I'm gonna select the image and same sort of thing, I'm gonna correct it, I'm gonna go to corrections up here at the top and I'm gonna make the image much lighter Great, you see, now you can actually see your face. And now I'm gonna crop it, and I'm gonna just do a simple crop from the top. We'll talk about more complex cropping in just a second. So I'm gonna just select the crop, and I'm just gonna remove that whole back end piece. And I don't really need to see their legs either, because I really wanna just focus on their face. And I'm gonna just crop right in. Oops. So you see now that it's really focused on the person, and not just, again, the sake of putting in an image for image sake. And I could do the same thing here. Right now, we're all looking at the, these people's feet. There's really no need to look at their feet in an image like this. I, I think the real focus is the people's faces. So a great way, sorry, having a little bit of delay here because of the webinar is causing a little bit of slowdown here with my system, but okay, great. There we go. See, and now the focus is on the particular people. So you see these, and what I did here is I'm gonna just go back here to the subdue in the color scheme. And you'll see now these two images match a bit more. They look like they're kind of part of the same scheme. They're clear. You can actually see the employees' faces. I'd say that's a much better, more effective way of presenting your images within PowerPoint. Let's look at another example in terms of images. Let's Another great um, tool that they've added in 2016 is removing backgrounds. So I used to have to be uh, go into other systems, other products like 
Photoshop and stuff to do this. And I love the fact that now PowerPoint has included this as part of its tools. So I'm just going to go here to some images. You'll see as I put it on the background that it has a white background. Not really great when you have a textured background like we have right now because you can't see what's behind it. So when I select the actual image and I'm going to go here to the top to picture tools, you'll see on the left there's a new icon called remove background. So when I select this, it just takes a little bit for basically Microsoft to, it does a first pass of what it thinks the background is and what the image is. So what you see that is colored is what is going to stay. Now, what you see here in purple is going to go. So we have a problem here. It's going to erase some of my laptop. So what I need to do is I need to mark areas to keep. So by selecting this, I can go in here and start drawing little lines basically telling PowerPoint, yeah, keep this part of the image, keep this part of the image, keep this part of the image. So I can kind of work around it. Now, again, it's sometimes it's not super precise, so you get a little bit of the white background as well. But you can trim up enough that at least when you're looking at it, and I'm going to say keep changes. Now, when I move it around my background, you see it's not blocking the background. And I could do exactly the same thing here with this gal mark areas to keep. It's going to take its first pass of what it thinks the background is. It takes a bit of energy and memory and you see it, that's its first pass. I actually did a pretty good job. And then all I need to do is mark up a little bit more of the rope and a little bit more of the rope here. Good stuff. And then I'm going to say keep changes. Great. And then you'll see she can, I'm just going to move her forward. You can put on top of stuff. So that's a great feature and that's definitely something I see a lot of in people's presentations where they put these images and they have white backgrounds or big backgrounds and they're kind of blocking stuff that's important in the uh, behind it and uh, especially images or background images and stuff. So this is definitely a feature that you should check out. So as I was mentioning about cropping and the fact that, you know, we can improve the quality, the look of the images in terms of the contrast and the brightness, uh, but we can also just be more creative in how we crop the images. So if I select an image, same sort of thing, it will open up a little icon at the top that says picture tools. And by selecting picture tools, it opens up my lovely ribbon here of all my tools and functionality. And over here on the right is crop. Now, before I just did a simple crop, I'm going to select the drop down now and you'll see I have the option to crop to shape. So interesting enough, you can crop an image to anything. You could crop it to an arrow, you could crop it to a smiley face. Uh, but for these uh, particular employees images, I'm going to make them circles just to be for a company profile. So I'm going to just click crop again and then I can go in and oops, actually play around with the circle itself and make it a bit smaller and adjust the sizing and there we go. Now what's great, what's a great feature as well in the new PowerPoint is it has the ability that you can if you spend a bit of work on this one, you can kind of copy it and apply it to the next one. So I'm going to just go here to home along the top and you see where it says format painter. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on the next image. So what it does, Format Painter actually exists across all of Microsoft uh, Office new products. Uh, sorry, 2016. And I would say it's a great feature at it at times. So as I just showed you, if you're working on the same page, slide, spreadsheet, it works out great because you can easily have your cursor on something, click the Format Painter, go to the next image, click it, and now again, it doesn't do the finite work. You still have to go in there and do the tweaking. And another thing I find is it doesn't keep the format. So once you've applied it to one image, you got to go back and press Format Painter again and again and again. So those are the elements of this tool or feature that I don't love. But I have to say, if I'm working on one particular slide or one location and I'm jumping back and forth and doing very similar tasks, it, it has become a bit of a time saver. Great, let's jump back to our presentation here. And we've talked about images and cropping, which is great. And we can talk a little bit about framing. It's not my, you know, 
I have to say from a professional looking presentation format, I find sometimes the the frames look a little tacky, I'll admit, depending on how they're used. So when you go to the picture section area here in this ribbon, right here, and it takes up a big space right in the middle. These are all these different frames. So you'll see as I hover over them, you'll see the preview. And it could be anything. It creates a shadow, it creates boxes around it, that kind of thing. Now, you know, I guess from a time saving perspective, if you were going to do a bunch of images, you know, these look okay. I just find some of them, they look a little tacky. And then I also find them challenging because sometimes when you edit them, then Microsoft will save the image that way. And then later on, if you want that same image back, you can't have it back. It's kind of forever in this state of shadows and white um, borders. So. I actually a lot of times when I work with these types of frames, I'll actually just create them myself because here in this section, we have picture borders, we have picture effects. So you can do things like shadows, drop shadows. So you can, in essence, create very similar effects that you see here in the frame section all by yourself. And the nice thing about it by creating it this way is the fact that then you can change it if you decide to change your mind later on. All right, let's jump to the next section here. Let's talk about having easy to read content. Now, we're not gonna get into this presentation about best practices when developing presentations because that overall is less content is definitely better. I do see the fact that folks put a lot of content on their slides. And again, depending on how you're presenting your presentation, whether it's in a large conference format or whether you're printing out and handing it to somebody, I think that makes a big difference in terms of how much content is on your slides. But I do think it's also important, regardless of whether it's a little or a lot, that it's well formatted so it's easy to read and scan. Because at the end of the day, people are not reading it like they do a, a novel or a book. So that you need to make the material much easier for people to scan, whether it's at a distance or even close up. So let's talk a little bit about some of the formatting. Now, most people I notice will just take basically, I'm going to erase, I'm going to change us back to our layout that we had originally. Sure. No, not this one. This one. Here we go. So here's some text that I had imported in from a website. Now, I've noticed a lot of people, you know, they'll copy and paste and they'll take whatever formatting the text box gives them. So if they'll go here and say, oh, yeah, I want to do some bullets. Great. OK, you could do that. What they don't recognize, though, is there's a lot more control that you have over the text box. So in particular, I find when you're dealing with presentations that are people are looking at from a distance, having more spacing in between things definitely helps. So for example, if I highlight this area with these bullets, I can go over here under home. We have an option here so under the sort of paragraph section called line spacing. Now, for sure, you can definitely make this line spaces themselves big. But the problem with that is that means that all the sentences get broken up to be three spaces. And that doesn't make for very good scanning. But if I actually click on the line spacing option, it opens up a little box that gives me some options. Now, I can play around with how much spacing. So say I want my bullets to be more indented just to add a little bit more, uh, make it easier for my audience to actually see that there are bullets. I can also fiddle around with the spacing. Like right now, it was set to six, but I might wanna change the spacing to 12. Now, by changing the spacing in this box, what you're doing is you're actually changing the spaces per, for each paragraph or each sentence after you press enter. So you'll see that not everything gets blown up to 12 points, so I'm gonna click okay. So what you'll see is you see a little bit more spacing happen between these particular bullets, but not in these because they were not selected. So you can do this type of work across the whole text box. So I'm going to go here and select six and you'll see that all of them got spaced out to six. Or like I said, you can be very specific and highlight particular boxes or, or sorry, particular um, sentences and get really specific about the spacing both of in between the lines as well as the indents. Now and as well, you can right click on any text box and there's an option to format shape. This opens up a um, option here on the right with actually lots of opportunity to customize your text box. And you can change obviously the fill, you can change the color of it, that's very common, but you can actually go here to text options 
and you can play around with the actual text box. So you can make it so that there's more of an indent. So right now I'm really shifting everything over. I can add more of a border on, along the top. I can make sure that it doesn't wrap it just goes all, the, goes all the way to the end, or I can make sure that it wraps it based on the size of the text box. So lots of opportunities to customize. Again, I notice a lot of folks kind of just take what PowerPoint gives them as part of their template, but there's lots of opportunity to customize and play around with these text, box and text boxes. And these obviously become the key component of your presentation. Tables, let's talk about tables. So, a lot of folks can create, you can create tables in PowerPoint, but I've noticed a lot of the folks I work with, they tend to import their tables from Excel or potentially Word. Uh, either way, I'm just going to go in here to my sample and pull up this table. Now, this is one that I've actually imported from uh, Excel. So it's, you know, sort of typical financial sheet. It's pretty plain. When I actually click on the table, PowerPoint recognizes it's a table. So you'll see when I click on it, up at the top, you'll see table tools show us, shows up. And when this is actually showing, when I click on design, all of a sudden this ribbon becomes basically my table tools. And if I click on layout, these become sort of additional tools to fiddle with my table. So these two, so as long as this little at the top says table tools, these two ribbons, design and layout, give me total control to play around with my table. Now. There's a lot of things that you could do just at one click without customizing. I can decide that the header row is colored. I could decide that the total row at the bottom is colored. I could decide that the last column has a color. And even from there, I can decide based on some presets what the colors are. So I can make it sort of more white. I can make it more sort of a blend. I can go in and ask for more solid colors. So there's some presets that I can go in. Now, you can also, I'm just going to undo all that. You can also do this all manually. So if I highlight this particular uh, row and I go here to shading, I can select whatever color and say I've preset some colors for my particular template, then I could select them here. I can also change the color of the text. Now, what I think is interesting here is right now it's really aligned to all, most of this actual whole table. I'm just going to actually fill in all the borders. So here under borders, I have the option to select all borders and I'm gonna just change the colors to make it just a little lighter gray. And I'm gonna select all borders. Okay, oh, all borders please. There we go, all borders. Okay, now what you'll see here is that all our text or all our data within our, our uh, table is aligned to the bottom. I find that a little bit hard on the eyes, again, especially when you're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to scan the information. So this is why, again, we have the design area, which allows you to play with the, the colors, colors of the borders, colors of the, the shading of the columns, of the rows. If you go along the top to layout, this allows you to play around with the spacing and that kind of stuff. So what I find really helpful is you can do it for the whole table is just select the whole table and there's an option here center uh, vertically and that aligns the whole thing all the text to the vert like to the middle of the actual cell. I can also align everything to the left I can align it to the middle I can align it to the right that kind of thing as well. I also find it interesting sometimes when you're dealing with tables and maybe the title of each of the rows is a bit long. You can also change the direction of the text, which I find helpful. You can rotate it all so that it's, you know, showing depending again on the use of your table. It might be handy to switch the, the direction of your text accordingly. I'm just going to put it back. And you can also play around with the margins. So I've noticed as well, sometimes people create tables with text in it and there's a lot of data and, you know, a lot of it's being kind of taken up by space. So you can play around a little bit with the spacing under cell margins. You can actually make it a little bit more narrow so that everything is just a little bit more, has a little bit more space inside of the cell. You can also even just get really finite with um, the information. You can go, again, same sort of business, format shape, and you can go and actually go and fiddle out all the different, each particular cell on its own if you want to fiddle. You'll notice here that they've merged this particular column or rows together, so you can do all that. So I, there's lots of opportunity. I've noticed as well, people tend to grab everything from Excel and just plop it in here and kind of hope for the best without 
working on the fact that you can actually make your tables look really great and really easy for your audience to kind of get what whatever the message is that you're trying to deliver. Let's talk about my next sort of uh, pain in my existence when I'm dealing with people and their PowerPoints is, is their graphs. So again, a lot of opportunity in PowerPoint to present financials, present data in a more visual way. And a common way to do that is graphs. Now, my challenge with that is that to me, a graph is point of a graph is to make data and numbers look you know better and and be easier to read than just a whole bunch of data in a spreadsheet the problem with that is sometimes when people put their powerpoints together and actually put their charts in they're not very easy to read they're they have too much data so for here's one that i've imported in you'll see i've noticed lots of folks i'm just going to move this guy out of the way for a second i'm going to make him smaller and move him out of the way just so we can stay here so here, I've, this is very typical. This one's actually colorful, but the challenge with it, it's so small. So really at this point, I can't even read the numbers of the actual values. So is there value of actually having like actual value of each of the columns here? I would say not. So you can actually click in once you've import. Now again, depends how you import it in. When you import um, or paste in a spreadsheet, you have the option to paste in a copy as an image or an actual copy of the spreadsheet. I'd recommend always doing a copy of the spreadsheet, not an image, because if it's an image, you can't alter it. It's basically just a screenshot of your of your graph and that's it, it's done. When you actually copy in, it in as a spreadsheet element, you can double click on it and actually have control. I can actually go in, in here and delete all the values from the top because I'm just gonna make, instead I'm gonna make the values along the side bigger so that my audience can see what's our actual total that we're working with. So, and I also notice here at the bottom, the actual year is very small and hard to read. So I'm gonna make this a bit bigger and easier to read. I'm also gonna take the values off this next column and then I'm gonna make them all, I'm gonna change the colors. So I can go through and make it, actually, actually right click on it and change the fills to orange. I can fiddle around with all of that kind of stuff. I can also right click on it and I have some options here. I can right here, here you go. So when I'm playing with the data right now, I'm actually, see, you notice it's actually pulling up the spreadsheet itself. So when I'm playing around with it, it's actually connecting back to my spreadsheet. That's something to keep in mind, depending on the link that you've created with your PowerPoint, your spreadsheet. One thing I have found though, is that when I create changes here, it doesn't necessarily equate back with your actual PowerPoint or your actual uh, spreadsheet file. But when you do change your data, so say you need to change your actual numbers accordingly, it does actually save it, which comes in handy instead of having to jump back and forth when you're creating your, oh no, see actually, oops, it took my diagram, I want this one, yeah, that instead. So anyways, it's a great way to have that sort of connection point, but definitely a way to improve the look of your of your graphs. Now let's take this other one as well. Now this is just again, a typical pie chart copied and pasted from Excel. Now when you, same sort of thing as table, when I click on my graph that I've imported in, you'll see I get the same sort of thing at the top, but instead of table tools, it now says chart tools. So when I click on it, same sort of business. I have two ribbons. I have a design ribbon and I have a format ribbon but the design ribbon is where I'm gonna actually do most of my work. So I have the opportunity to add a, just at a quick click. There's some presets of like how to make your graph look a bit better and you can pick and choose from there. You can make some changes to the actual colors based on the ones that are sort of preset here. Or like I said, you could actually go in and go by each particular uh, area and change these. So this one gets a bit tricky because you have to actually select this particular part of the graph and fill it in. So you can manually go through and select all of it. You could actually go in and actually change your title. So there's a lot of stuff that you can actually go in here as well. And you'll see there's some additional features here in terms of editing the data. You can even change your chart type. So say you're working on it, you decide, you know what? I don't really want a pie chart. Maybe I want a, a bar chart instead. So you can go in and make that change and it will sort of convert the data. Now, any of the changes that you might've made in terms of like playing around with the uh, what's displayed and what's not might not apply because it's gonna go back to the original uh, spreadsheet that you grabbed and pull that data from there. 
So it's just something to consider, but lots of opportunity. But my biggest counsel that I can give people when they're working on their, their graphs is to make the content visible. Because really, at the end of the day, if people can't read the numbers and see the graph itself, or there's so many numbers and they're so small, it's really not adding any value. So something to keep in mind. All right, moving on. Good stuff. So now we're going to move into some of these great features that have come around with 2016. And I, I think they've definitely upped the game for a PowerPoint and definitely stuff that I, I've been asking for and I've been wanting. And I usually, again, like I had to go into other programs to get them before. And now it's great that you can actually do it all in PowerPoint. So let's talk about the, you know, common one, icons. You know, there's tons of situations where, you know, whether it's instead of using bullets or maybe you're creating an infographic and you're trying to explain a diagram to people, having icons is, is a great way to tell a story. Now, what's different about icons versus just adding images is that these icons are actually very editable in terms of their colors and size and they always stay, regardless of how you scale them, like really big, really small, they always stay nice and crisp. So let me just show you where you can find that. So I'm going to go back here to my sample and I'm going to go here to any kind of, we'll just go here to this slide here. Good stuff. And I'm going to go along the top to the insert tab and this will open up this ribbon here. And if you go along the top to the icons button here, it will open up this window with all these different icons to choose from. So I'm going to choose the piggy and the eye and the clock. Sure and click insert. Now, as I mentioned, these are completely editable. You can make them as big or as small as you like. And what I love about them, the fact is you can change them to match whatever color you need. So say, you know, you have a particular color for your company or branding, you just go under here under graphics and change the color accordingly. So it could be purple, this one could be blue, and this one can be green. So again, great. I, I use them a lot, like I said, for in, in lieu of bullets. So in this situation, you know, instead of having these little bullets, you could put little icons instead. Or like I said, if you're creating a diagram, it's definitely a great, a great feature. Uh, next one. Ah, morph, the morph transition. So I'm sure if you've, again, worked with PowerPoint before, you're familiar with the fact that it has animation features. But we, I could do a whole webinar on just animation within PowerPoint because it can get quite complex. There's the, addition, there's the easy sort of features, you know, wipe things in, fly things in. But honestly, a lot of people don't like that, to be honest. They don't like the things flying in and out for no particular reason. So I've noticed people have kind of moved away from the animation piece. But I, I have noticed there's this new feature that they've added, and it's not really an animation, it's a, considered a transition, uh, but it definitely makes it so much easier to add a little bit more like a dynamic aspect to your presentation without spending a lot of time and energy. Let me show you how it works. So I'm going to go back here into my little sample. And so here's a little infographic that we've created and say, you know, we're talking about it and we want to have, you know, it show up and then all of a sudden we want in the next slide we want stuff to kind of move over so that we can talk about it. You know, we're going to talk about it like as a the next part of our webinar or something like that, next steps. Great. So what I do, oops, so that's what I want it to do. I'm going to just move everything back. So before I get started, I want that to happen. I'm going to take the actual slide that I want to work with and I'm going to duplicate the slide. So that creates a duplicate, an exact copy. On the copied version, I'm going to move my text to where I want it to go. Great. So th this is the end point of where it's all going to land. Now I'm going to go back up here to my first slide that started it, and I'm going to go along the top ribbon to transitions. And now I'm going to select morph. Oh, wrong one. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go to the one underneath it and select morph. There we go. So you'll see that what just happened there, I'll just play it again under preview. So during that slide, so you see here in my thumbnails, through this type of functionality, we actually end up getting two slides, this slide and this slide. And that basically PowerPoint has created a little mini animation to help move the content from this look to this look. Now, 
that's all it can really do. I'll just tell you that it can only really move stuff. I've tried to do a little more complex stuff, but it can't, it, you can't really time it. You can't quince it too much. Everything kind of moves at the same time. So again, not the type of functionality that you're going to get in the animation section, but definitely sort of as a quick fix, add a little bit of movement to your PowerPoint, definitely a cool way. But just keep in mind that under the more, if you need to have a basically duplicate slides in order to actually work. Great, let's talk about my next feature here. Ah, the photo album. Now this has actually existed for a while in other uh, iterations of PowerPoint, but they're definitely getting better at it. I'll say that much. So I'm gonna go here, doesn't really matter which slide we're on. I'm just gonna pick a slide in general and I'm gonna go along the top here to insert and I'm gonna select the photo album and you'll see a drop down because if I had a photo album already existing, I could check it, click it from here and edit it. But I'm gonna go to new photo album and what you'll notice is it opens up a little window that basically gives me an opportunity to create my photo album. Now, some, some things to keep in mind when you do this, when it creates the, the photo album, it actually generates a whole new PowerPoint. It doesn't create it in here. You can always copy the slides over and bring it in here later, but that's something else to keep in mind is that it's gonna generate this whole new file. And so if you do need to do formatting, master slides, that kind of thing, just keep in mind, you, you have to just bring everything over here because when it creates it in the new slide, it might it's not gonna bring over all that formatting and master slides and stuff. So I'm just gonna go here to file, and I'm going to just pick a few, a few images. I'm just going to go and find some general photos. Maybe shouldn't have picked. A, yeah, here we go. Some general photographs. Great. And insert. And once it puts them all in here, you'll notice that they're all listed here. Now I can make some choices like I right now I I can change and move the sequence of how they're going to appear in the PowerPoint. I can also add text boxes for the actual slides. I can also make some decisions. Do I want one picture on each slide? Do I want two pictures on each slide? Do I want it to be in a frame? Do I want it? So I, there's some formatting. I could do a soft edge rectangle. I could do center. Now I can't get into the fancy stuff like circles and stuff, but I can do rectangles. I can even pick a theme. If you've already sort of preset a theme in advance, you could find it and this would save you a bit of time and effort. So if you created your master slide and saved it as a template, then you could actually go in here and grab it so that when it generated this photo album, you wouldn't have to work on the branding on the master slides again. So you can also make some choices in terms of all the pictures being black and white, ensuring the captions. You can actually do even formatting here. You know how I mentioned the fact that you could play around with the brightness, the contrast. You can now, you can do that all once it's in PowerPoint, but what's great is you can do a lot of all this sort of pre-work here. Now I'm gonna click create. It's just gonna take a little moment for it to do its business and you'll see it sort of generates a photo album. And from there, like I said, I can go in and do all my kind of formatting. But like I said, it's a totally new file. Uh, but if you were, again, for a family event or, or employee event, sales event, if you had lots and lots of pictures and you wanted to create some sort of like, I've known, I've heard some people who use this for, um, uh, say you wanted to have a video that played with sort of images that faded in and out, that kind of thing. You could create an image on each of these slides and then create a transition with fading and then export it as a movie. And then basically you could play this with your photographs sort of in the background at a sales event or that kind of thing. So some definitely opportunities with this photo album feature. Okay, let's talk about mix. So the mix is actually considered an extension. You need to download it and install it into your PowerPoint. And like I said, it's only with 2016 but it does open up a whole bunch of new features. Like I said, that I used to have to go definitely to other programs and now I do it all within PowerPoint. But I'll say this, they're definitely learning and some of them are not as smooth as they can be. But again, in a bind, I think they definitely provide some functionality. So I'm gonna go here along the top. Once you've installed Mix, you'll see that it appears as an option on the tab. And when you click on it, you'll have the Mix ribbon. So you'll see we have a bunch of options. We have slide recording, we have the ability to do quizzes and uh, to add quizzes to your actual presentation. You can actually do a screen recording. You can do a screenshot and you can add some sort of, you know, 
more multimedia. You can add a video, you can add audio to your presentation. The real intent of Mix, and I'll just do this part right here to show you when you get to the slide recording. When you click on slide recording, this new kind of box opens. So what, power, what Microsoft is trying to do is create a tool to make it as easy as possible to create recordings of your presentations. So say you were doing, you know, a sales presentation and you wanted just to record it or a training video. And again, you want to sort of do it all in advance, uh, sync up, you know, the slides with your voice. You could even, and what's cool, you can see here, you can even have your face. If you had a video camera, webcam set up, they'd show your face while it's happening. So what's cool about this screen recording area is so I can basically click through and start going through my particular slides. And once I click record, I'm not going to do it right now. It would record it and it records my the screen. It records my voice at the same time. If I'm you know, working more on a tablet or say I wanted to highlight something to you, I could basically take my inking and highlight the fact why it's not working, inking that. Oh, because we're not recording. That's why. Yeah. So you can make some, you know, you can draw arrows. There's lots of really cool stuff that you can do while you're um, doing your presentation. What I did love about this compared to other, now this, this PowerPoint doesn't have any notes, but I recently used this tool to record a webinar for another client or a video for another client. And what I loved was the fact that, because in a lot of programs, you know, your slide notes, your PowerPoint notes, I'll show you right here. I'm just gonna exit out of here. Your PowerPoint notes exist down here. And what's challenging is in a lot of formats, when I go to present like this, present mode, I can't see my notes. I have to actually print them out in advance, right? And that adds, you know, paper and costs and that kind of thing. And what I love is the fact that with this mixed slide recording section, if you did have slide notes as you're talking through, you can have the slide notes showing and basically it gives you a direct script. So you don't have to print, they're right here, right there actually show up right here in front of your face. So it's a great sort of feature. So I think this mix thing I've, and then it saves it in this area called the mix area, my mixes, and then you can export it to video. Now I'm not gonna go into these too much cause I've noticed that there's sometimes a little unstable. So the quizzes and videos, basically these are third party apps. None of them are um, actually PowerPoint or Microsoft. They're actually add-ins. And there are other people who've created these tools. I've used some of them. Some of them are better than others, I will say. And what you do is you have to read a little bit about how they manage the quizzing. So basically they help you create a quiz within your PowerPoint. Now, the challenge I found is that some of them don't aren't really good about where the data goes, like after the person's taken the quiz. So they create a lovely quiz in PowerPoint, that, but they don't really support the back end. So there's just some things to kind of keep in mind as you're working with these add-ins but potentially has some, again, I think this really just came out last fall. So I think there's lots of opportunity for this to even grow and get better over time. And then the screen recording, like I mentioned, that's really to do a screen recording. So say you wanted to film, you know, how to open up something, your product on your website or open your app on your website or something, this would record anything that you're doing on your screen. Uh, and you can make some decisions of whether it has vo uh, sound or not. Uh, what I have noticed though, is that like, it doesn't have the type of functionality, so to speak, that some other screen capture software has where you can decide the size and the resolution, but there are some functionality which is there. And then screenshot is great in terms of like, say you just want to take a screenshot of, you know, a website that you're on or whatever, it really allows you to sort of decide, oh, I want a screenshot of this. And then you have a screenshot of it. Now, there's nothing different between doing that and, and print screen, but the print screen gives you the whole screen. Whereas when I did the screenshot, I was able to decide maybe I just wanted a small section of that particular screen. So you have a little bit more control in that fashion. All right, let's talk about the last feature here, the Zoom feature. I wanted to leave this for last because it does alter your, and I do recommend if you are gonna play around with this Zoom feature that you do wait till maybe at the end of your presentation or I recommend creating a second version of your presentation because it does alter things in the back end. And that I find that the only way to get rid of it later is to undo or to start from scratch again. So something to keep in mind. But here, let me show you how it works. It definitely has lots of capabilities. So I'm gonna go here to my sample and really I could go anywhere. I'm gonna just go here right to my top and I'm gonna go along the top to insert. 
And now we'll see here, there's this new area called Zoom. So I basically have sort of three options. I have a summary Zoom and I have slide Zoom. A summary Zoom basically creates a summary page with little minis of all your slides. Let me show you. So I'm gonna click summary Zoom and I can decide what slides I want showing on my summary slide. So I, I want this one, this one. So say I want six to show for my particular presentation. And I'm gonna click insert. So you'll see it actually generates a brand new slide. And that's why I mentioned to you that it's good to do this after you've kind of done all your developing and designing because it is gonna start generating new slides. And what you'll notice as well on the left-hand side, we didn't really talk very much about it, but PowerPoint does have sections. Again, more from an organizational standpoint, it really doesn't alter the functionality and the playback of your presentation. But you do see that we have a default section and that PowerPoint, while we created this Zoom, created a summary section all by itself. And so here we basically have little minis of all the slides and I can fiddle with them, I can change the layout of them. But what's great is I'm just gonna go here to the playback and if I click on them, you'll see we go to each of the slides. So again, if you had a long presentation with 20 some slides, maybe not the best feature. But if you were, cre oops, if you were creating a, um, a sales presentation, maybe something to have like on a tablet where you don't wanna go through all the slides every single time, you could create this sort of summary page slide and then basically click in, click out, and then, oh, I wanna go to this one. Great, click in, click out. Great, so that's the Zoom summary. We also have the Zoom, it's called the slide Zoom. So I'm gonna just go here to slide zoom. Same sort of thing, I'm gonna click what slides I want to be displayed. In this case, I'll just pick some different ones. Now in this case, it's going. To, it's not creating a summary, it's just adding little minis of my oh, those particular slides. So you'll see here, I can move them around, I can make them smaller, I can make them bigger. And they are linked, but they won't work. So the difference is though, is they won't work like the summary one. The summary one you saw, when I clicked in and I clicked out, it actually clicked back out to the summary. With this particular one, if I click through, it's just gonna take me through all the slides. Let me show you. So I'm gonna just go here to my display. This one is my display. I maybe should have done that. So if I click on this one here, you'll see it's gonna take me to this, but if I click again, It'll just take me in again. Oh, it's like presentation. Oh my God, it's inception presentation. Well, that's pretty cool. Never done that before. Um, maybe I shouldn't have done that there. Anywho, I think you guys get the point. The fact that this one here will actually click you through across and not as a summary, just something to keep in mind. I find this feature here, the slide zoom, this comes in handy in training. Like say, for example, you wanted to have what the next slide is gonna be right here at the corner, or say you had like a, a section, you had a whole section like, so say for example here, I have my whole section about 2016 features. Great, well maybe what I wanna do is maybe I wanna create a slide zoom of that particular title. And then I'm gonna add it here to each of my, as a small little, basically it creates a link. It's basically an easy way to create a link back to that particular slide there. And I could add that across all this section. And then again, in a sales situation, a presentation, if I have to quickly go back to that particular slide in my presentation, all I have to do is click there and it would take me back to that particular slide. And then the last one I wanted to show you is the section zoom. What that does is you have to actually take a, a few slides and click section zoom and it will decide which section you want to put it in. So it basically created a bit of a default section and added all those slides in again. I don't find that feature as, I don't know, fantastic. To me, it doesn't really is useful, but I find the first two definitely, uh, the summary zoom, very handy in a sales situation, training situation, and the slide zoom, adding that link, quick link to particular slides, especially if you're creating, again, more of a dashboard type of thing, definitely adds a lot of functionality. Great. Well, I really hope that you guys found this webinar helpful and I hope you'll join us for our next one.